to test review. So in this problem, it asks us to solve for d. So we can do this by going ahead and taking the square root of both sides. So when you take the square root of both sides, we get d plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. So we can now separate this into two equations. So we get d plus 5 equals 4 and d plus 5 equals negative 4. So now let's go ahead and solve for d by subtracting 5 from both sides. So when we subtract 5 from both sides, we get d equals negative 1. So over here, when we subtract 5 from both sides, we get d equals negative 9. So in this problem, it asks us to solve for x. So notice that this quadratic is not already in standard form. So I'm going to go ahead and get it into standard form, which means I need ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So to get this into standard form, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 24 from both sides. And so I have 2x squared plus 2x minus 24 is equal to 0. So notice that this quadratic can actually be factored. It actually has a GCF of 2. So I can actually go ahead and divide every single term in this equation by 2. So I'm going to factor out 2, and then I'm just going to divide that out from every single term. And remember, this equation is set equal to 0. So I have 2 times 2 over 2 cancels, so I have x squared, plus 2 and 2 cancels, and I have x, and then minus 24 over 2 is 12, and that's equal to 0. So now what I can do is I can actually divide both sides of this equation by 2, and that's going to give me x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. So I'm actually going to go ahead and solve this one by factoring. So um, to factor, I'm going to find two factors of negative 12 that are going to add up to b, which is 1. Since 12 is negative, I need a positive and a negative factor. Since the adding term is positive, so I'm going to make the bigger factors positive, right? Because we want it to add to b. So the factors of 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. If I make the bigger factor positive and the smaller factor negative, the correct combination is negative 3 and 4. So I can factor this as x minus 3 times x plus 4 is equal to 0. So I can separate this into two equations. So I have x minus 3 equals 0 and x plus 4 equals 0. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve these equations. Here I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I have x equals 3. Here I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I have x equals negative 4. So those are going to be the two solutions to this quadratic equation. All right, so now in this problem, it wants us to solve for x. So since 13 is a prime number, I don't think it's going to be able to solve um, by factoring. So we're going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So remember, I need to label a, b, and c. So I have a equals 1, b equals negative 4, and c equals 13. So remember, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I'm going to plug everything in and then simplify. So I have negative of negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 13. And that's all divided by 2 times 1. So I have x equals negative negative 4 is positive 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared is 16. And then minus... 4 times 13 is 52, and that's all over 2 times 1, which is just 2. So I have x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 52, which is negative 36, and that's all over 2. So since I have a negative radicand, I can turn that into an imaginary number. Um, this is going to become 4 plus or minus the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1, all over 2. And so I have 4 plus or minus the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of negative 1 is i, and that's all over 2. I can simplify this because 4 and 6i are both divisible by 2, so that tells me that x equals 4 over 2, which is 2, plus or minus 6i over 2, which is 3i. So 2 plus or minus 3i is the solution. So now in this problem, it asks us that I'm hoping that you'll look at these terms on the left side and notice that this is actually a perfect square trinomial. So remember we had that factoring pattern, um, a plus b squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? So if we think of this as a squared and this last term is b squared, that means that a equals x, b equals 6, right? Notice that 2ab is just 2 times x times 6, which is 12x. So you can see that that matches what we have here. So we can rewrite this as x plus 6 squared equals 75. Now in order to solve, we need to take the square root of both sides. So when we take the square root of both sides, we get x plus 6 equals the square root of 75. So remember, we need the plus or minus. And also remember that whenever you have a radical, you want to go ahead and see if you can simplify. We can simplify this because we can rewrite this as x plus 6 equals 
plus or minus the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. The square root of 25 is 5, so this is x plus 6 equals plus or minus 5 square root of 3. Now we can go ahead and solve for x by subtracting 6 from both sides. And when we do that, we get x equals negative 6 plus or minus 5 square root of 3. And that is now our final answer. So now let's go ahead and solve for x. So here we have a quadratic, but kind of notice that we have something where we have an a squared and then a minus bx, and that b is actually divisible by 2. If that b is divisible by 2, we can actually use completing the square to solve this um, if you want to do it that way. So I'm going to do that. So I have x squared minus 10x. Remember to complete the square, what I do is I take b divided by 2, and then I square it, and I add it to both sides. So in this case, my b is negative 10, so I'm going to do negative 10 divided by 2 and then square it. So that means I have negative 5 squared, which is 25. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides of my equation. So that means that this now becomes a perfect square trinomial, right? So what it, this is going to become is that x plus b over 2 squared, right? That's how I can rewrite it. So since my b over 2 was negative 5, I can write this as x minus 5 squared. So this whole left side is going to become x minus 5 squared, and that's equal to 21 plus 25, which is 46. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides, okay? And so I have x minus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 46. So now all I need to do in order to solve for x is go ahead and add 5 to both sides. And when I add 5 to both sides, I get x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 46. And that is now my final answer. Okay, so in this problem it says solve for x. And notice once again, it's not in standard form, but it doesn't look like I can use any of my other patterns to solve it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this into standard form. So ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 14 and subtract x from both sides. And I'm just going to write my terms in standard form. So I have 3x squared. I'm going to write the minus x first because I want it to be bx. And then I have my minus 14, right? And that's equal to 0. So I personally always like to factor my trinomials. So I'm going to see if I can do this by factoring. So remember, I want to try my a and my c. So a times c equals 3 times negative 14. And so when I do 3 times negative 14, I get negative 42. So 42 is negative, so I need a positive and a negative factor. My middle term, my b, is negative 1, so that means my bigger factor is going to be negative. So when I list out my factors, I have 1 and 42, 2 and 21, 3 and 14, and then 6 and 7. So if I make all the bigger factors negative, the correct combination that adds up to negative 1 is 6 and negative 7. So this is going to be 3x squared plus 6x minus 7x minus 14, and that's equal to 0. So now I'm going to put these terms into two groups. So I have 3x squared plus 6x plus negative 7x minus 14. That's equal to 0. Now let's factor out the GCF of each um, set of terms. So here I can factor out a 3x. So I have 3x squared over 3x plus 6x over 3x. And so that's going to be 3x times 3 and 3 cancel. x squared over x is just x. And then plus 6 over 3 is 2, and then my x is just cancel. And then I have plus, here I can factor out a negative 7, right? So I'm going to do negative 7x divided by negative 7 minus 14 divided by negative 7, and that's equal to 0. So that plus negative, I'm just going to turn that into a minus 7, and then negative 7, negative 7 cancels, and I have x. Minus 14 over negative 7 becomes plus 2, and that's equal to 0. So if I write this in factored form, I have x plus 2 times 3x minus 7 is equal to 0. So now I'm going to set each of my factors equal to 0. So I have x plus 2 equals 0. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. So that gives me x equals negative 2. And then when I set my other factor, my 3x minus 7 equal to 0, I'm going to go ahead and add 7 to both sides. And when I add 7 to both sides, I get 3x equals 7. And then I divide both sides by 3. And then I get x equals 7 over 3. So those are my two solutions. All right, now in this problem, it asks you to multiply two complex numbers. Um, I personally prefer to use FOIL, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So if I do first times first, I have 5 times 4, which is equal to 20. Outside is 5 times 7i, so that's 35i. Inside is negative 3i times 4, which is negative 12i. Last is negative 3i times 7i, 
which is negative 21i squared, which is basically negative 21 times negative 1, so that's positive 21. Now I just need to add up all my terms, so I have 20 plus 35i minus 12i plus 21. So I can simplify by combining my like terms, so I have 20 plus 21 plus 35i minus 12i. So when I simplify, 20 plus 21 gives me 41, and then plus 35 minus 12i is going to give me 23i. So 41 plus 23i is my final answer. So in this problem, I'm going to ask you to write an equivalent expression. So notice we have a negative radigan. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as an imaginary number. So I have 5 square root of 72 times the square root of negative 1. So that means that this negative 1 is going to become i, so I can write this as 5i times the square root of 72. Well, now the square root of 72, I always want to think about if I can make my radical better. So I can rewrite this as 5i times the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. The square root of 36 is 6, so this is 5i times 6 times the square root of 2. 5i times 6 is going to be 30i, so this simplifies to 30i times the square root of 2. So in this problem, it asks you to write inequality. So remember, the first step to do is to rewrite this as an equation. So I have x squared minus 9x plus 14 is equal to 0. So I like to solve by factoring. So I'm going to find two factors of 14 that add up to negative 9. Since 9 is negative and 14 is positive, both my factors need to be negative. So I'm going to write out my uh, factors as 1, 14, 2, and 7. I'm going to make everything negative. The correct combination is negative 2 and negative 7. So I have x minus 2 times x minus 7 is equal to 0. So if I write these in two separate equations, I have x minus 7 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. So if I add 2 to both sides, I'm going to get this as x equals 2. And then here, if I add 7 to both sides, I'm going to get x equals 7. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my number line. I'm going to plot 2 and 7. So when I plot 2 and 7, I'm going to use open circles because I have the greater than sign. I'm going to pick numbers as test points. So I'm going to pick 0, 5, and 10. And I'm going to see what makes my inequality true. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 squared minus 9 times 0 plus 14 is greater than 0. So that's telling me that 0 minus 0 plus 14 is greater than 0, which says 14 is greater than 0. So that is true. Okay, so I know I'm going to have to shade in this direction because it contains numbers that make my inequality true. Okay. So now let's try our other test point, which is 5. So we have 5 squared minus 9 times 5 plus 14 is greater than 0. So that's telling me that 25 minus 45 plus 14 is greater than 0. 25 minus 45 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus 14 is negative 6. Negative 6 is greater than 0 is false. So we don't shade that region in the middle. Now let's try 10. So we have 10 squared minus 9 times 10 plus 14 is greater than 0. So that's telling me that 100 minus 90 plus 14 is greater than 0, which is 24 is greater than 0, which is true. So I do shade in this direction also. Okay, so this represents the correct solution um, to this inequality. So now let's try solving the system of equations. So you can solve this by graphing if that's how you prefer to do it. If you were graphing, you would solve and look for the two points of intersection. Um, I'm also going to show you how to solve this algebraically. You can do that by setting these two equations equal, um, equal to each other. So we can just like substitute this into here for y. So that's equal to x plus 21. So now I can rearrange this to get it in standard form by subtracting minus x minus 21 from both sides. So when I do that, I get x squared plus 4x minus 12 is equal to 0. Um, you can actually factor this. This will become x plus 6 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. If you solve x plus 6 equals 0, you get x equals negative 6. If you solve x minus 2 equals 0, you get x equals 2. So now to find the values of y, I actually prefer to use the linear equation. So when x equals negative 6, if I plug into y equals x plus 21, I get y equals negative 6 plus 21, which is equal to 15. So that means that the first solution is going to be at negative 6, 15. Okay, and now let's find the other solution. We have y equals x plus 21, and we're plugging in x equals 2. So we have y equals 2 plus 21, which means y equals 23. So 2, 23 is the other solution. So both of these points are going to be solutions to the system, which you can also find by graphing in Desmos.